jungle camp. So this week is jungle camp. That's why Kim and I are hanging out. Us and the other 30-ish people who work at Jungle Scout are all uh, hanging out in the same spot. We have a really exciting session tonight and then dinner with the team after. Yeah. Right? So if sure, hopefully you guys are following along with the Million Dollar Case Study. If not, you can go to junglescout.com forward slash million. You can find out all the previous episodes that we've done. Right now, we're doing the Europe edition. So we already launched a product, two products in the US. We have bamboo marshmallow sticks as well as hooded baby towels. This time, Kim's doing all the work. Thank you. Um, we're launching a product in Europe, and we're sharing every step along the way, like she said, so you guys can mimic our success and learn from our failures. It's a fabulous educational resource, and we might be a little bit biased, but we think it's the best on the entire web, so it, it's really awesome. With that being said, what are we talking about today? Uh, we're going to talk about um, product design specifications, so how to like really figure out how to spec out your product idea and talk to your suppliers about that. And then the goal is to order some samples. All right. And Kim has pre uh, prepared some slides for us, I guess. What do you think? Are we, are we forgetting anything? No, nope, let's get to I it. I think the only thing we have forgotten is if you guys haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel or if you don't <laughs> give us a thumbs up or like, we're not, this is the last one if that doesn't happen. This is it. <laughs> so do it now so you don't forget. All right. Kim, I'm gonna switch over to your computer. We can see your screen now. Cool. What are we working with? What you read? You tell them this week. Okay. Yeah. So um, every single week we're doing a giveaway. Um, so it gives you guys the chance to to join in on the fun. Um, we're selecting three winners every single week. Um, you could win either a pro extension. Um, um, a few months of the web app, or uh, you could even get a Jungle Scout T-shirt. Like we're we're wearing some Jungle Scout T-shirts. We got new T-shirts this yeah, week. We'll we show could... them to them everyone later yeah. after we go back full screen. Um, so yeah, uh, if you want to um, get involved, go to junglescout.com forward slash giveaway, um, and then if we just take a look at some of the uh, amazing like responses that we've had so far. And I will say we're giving away. We're doing these giveaways every single week for all of 2017. So if you're watching the replay at a future date, don't feel like it's too late. You can still go to junglescout.com forward slash million, or excuse me, forward slash giveaway and enter the giveaway so you can be uh, included in these prizes. Who, who, who are the winners this week, Kim? Oh man, that's a good picture. Yeah, that's, I like that. Yeah, I really like that picture. Uh, so it's Munen Munendra. Sorry, I may have pronounced that, better that than badly. I can do. <laughs> Um, so yeah, wrote a really nice comment from New Delhi in India, got Jungle Scout a month ago, been lucky enough to be part of a uh, million dollar case to Europe from session one. Following along, also um, session following one, it's awesome. Along, yeah, so thanks for joining us and, and submitting your, your entry. Uh, then we've got uh, Christian, um, discovered Jungle Scout in May, launched your first product on Amazon with Congratulations, tools. Christian, that's well awesome. Done. Awesome. And then... One more, we've got Toby. Yeah, well, Toby won, and we also want to give him a special shout out because we noticed he's been very helpful in the comments and on the Facebook pages. Um, he posted a great picture for us on the Jungle <laughs> Scout page, which is awesome. So Toby and everyone else who's been announced, um, our social media manager, Amelia, will be in touch with you guys and get you guys hooked up um, with your uh, free stuff. Sweet. Awesome. So where are we at right now? The first four sessions of um, the Europe edition. So this is kind of part two. We are, you know, like during part one, we launched the hooded, hooded baby towels in the U.S. market. This is part two. We're in Europe now, and it's okay if you haven't seen any of our U.S. edition um, episodes because we're starting all the way from the beginning. We're going to take you through the entire process, everything that you need to know. So sessions one and two, we did a great uh, did great sessions on product research. If you missed them and you want to see them again, again, you can find them at junglescout.com forward slash million. Sessions three and four, we talked about uh, how to choose the best supplier. Last week during session four, we brought on a, um, a friend of mine and a very smart guest, Manuel, who helped us choose you know, or figure out how to choose good factories. And then today, we are talking about more product research how to kind of really narrow it down. So Kim, what niche did you decide on? Uh, so uh, sleeping bags. So I, I guess, you know, that'd be like camping, outdoors. 
Yeah, but you know, if you go to Amazon and you look at the sleeping bags, it's very evident that there's multiple types, right? There's kinds for two people and one people, a person and mummy bags and this bag and that bag. I'm not too big of a camper, so I don't really know all these things, but um, what's really nice, even if you don't know about the niche, even if you're not very familiar with it, it's cool because we can make uh, decisions based on the data, and we're gonna show you how to do this, about what type of product or what type of you know sleeping bag um, inside our niche that we want to sell. So we're gonna be teaching you guys how you can dive into the niche that you select even further to select something that you can differentiate you know, from the competitors, hopefully do, do, does really well. Um, so we're gonna be talking about where to find that type of data, where to find real customer feedback. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about testing and certifications. Manuel kind of gave us uh, a, little, a little bit of snippet last week, right, about this information, but we're gonna be talking about it more tonight. Um, yeah, and the end goal, after we're done with all this, we want to know and understand exactly what type of product uh, we want to order from the factory. So we need to have good specifications to give the factory so we can start ordering the samples. So that's the end goal. That's what you'll know, you'll understand by the end of today's session. All right, what do we have here, Kim? So <laughs> again, like Greg, like I'm not a sleeping bag <laughs> expert by any means. <laughs> And so when I first started looking at this product idea, I was like, there's mummy style, there's double sleeping bags, there's an envelope style, drawstring hoods, different colors, additional features. There's like tons of different things that we could do with this product. And I needed to really like figure out exactly what my product was gonna be and why, you know, I wanted to stand out from the competition um, and sell really well. So with that in mind, we want to eliminate the guesswork. And as Greg's already said, we need to look into the data to make sure that the specification that I that I go with for this product is gonna be one that sells really well, generates lots of profit. We've got a huge goal. We're, we're giving all of our profits to charity. So we really wanna make sure we get this right. So step one, we're gonna go back um, kind of to our product research. We are going to um, really dive deep into this particular niche, uh, explore our competitors, look at their competitors' reviews, see what's doing well, what's like kind of their unique value propositions that they're calling out, see if we need to be including that in our particular product. Um, Kim's been tracking some of these products in her product tracker inside of the Jungle Scout web app. So we can look at these products in there, you know, we can see which ones are really, you know, like look at them underneath a magnifying glass, right? Which ones are really selling well on a day-to-day -day basis, make sure nothing was um, maybe thrown off by a promotional giveaway or that type of thing. So that, that, that's step one for tonight. So the place where I started was to go into the Chrome extension again, and we'll take a look at it in a moment but I just wanted to go back to sort of the top 10 uh, sellers of sleeping bags and take a look at all the different styles and what the estimated sales and revenue are for those types of sleeping bags. So that's really gonna show me um, a really solid like understanding of what's gonna sell best and what's gonna be the most profitable. Exactly, and that's, um, that's really good to do, right? Because you can look at like the, the sales of all these competitors' products and at that point, we can start be thinking, okay, like why is this one selling so much better than the other one, right? Do they have much better imagery or it's a bit much higher end product or it has much better reviews? So we kind of be thinking about like, what do we need to do to make sure that we can duplicate or replicate that person's success? Exactly. And so there were three different styles that I found and we'll go into Jungle Scout in a moment and take a look at this. Um, but I was really looking for, um, for each style. So we've got a mummy style, so that's, um, kind of uh, more fitted. how would you describe that <laughs> it's like fitted to the body it has like yeah. a, a drawstring hood and it kind of tapers at the feet um envelope style which is more like a rectangle shape it's, it doesn't fit the body as closely and then double sleeping bags so that's like really wide and fits two humans in at the same time so they were like the three main styles and i was looking for the the sales and demand for, for each of those as well as the revenue and profit. So just because one particular style might have more sales, um, it might be at a lower price point, therefore um, it may have less profit. So that's another consideration. And then also 
how high the competition is for each of those styles as well. Um, so what do you think? Should we take a look at Jungle Scout now? And yeah, let's do the, it. Yeah. That sounds good. And then while Kim pulls that up, you know, you guys can be thinking about the same thing. Like, you know, you're going to have to be thinking about what your particular niche is and what different types are in there. So we use like the hooded baby towel as another example. You know, if I were to make that same grid, it would probably say something like um, bamboo hooded baby towels, cotton hooded baby towels, um, like some of them were square and some of them were rectangles. So that, those would be the types of things like, you know, for that example of how I'd kind of be comparing them. Um, so it looks like you're on amazon.co.uk. Yep. It's just, uh, sorry, I think this might be my internet. <laughs> <laughs> we're clogging up the internet in our hotel <laughs> with, uh, both of us on the same connection, huh? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I've, yeah, I've gone to amazon.co.uk and I've searched in all departments for sleeping bag. Um, yeah, you should probably say the refresh there. This on one. That one. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what you can do, you know, you can go to your particular niche. You can um, search for whatever you think like your main keyword would be, right? And then... What I would encourage you guys to do is sort either by um, estimated sales or sort by uh, estimated revenue. And that way you can see like from the top down, you know, which one, which particular products are selling the best either by maximum unit sales or maximum amount of revenue. And um, from there, you know, that's when we can be thinking deeper, like, okay, why are these particular ones doing well? Um, Looks like your internet, I'm hogging all the internet because it's taking a second even to upload, update oh, on my yeah. screen. Your screen's uh, 10 seconds behind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's right, you can pull that up. And again, like, I I'm trying to like put myself in you guys' shoes, you know, like from the audience and thinking about this, you're probably thinking like, okay, well, like, you know, I understand that you're looking at the different styles of, um, sleeping bags, but let's try to pull up another example, right? So let's say, for instance, I'm gonna sell uh, these mic stands. So same thing, I would go out there, I would search for mic stands, and for that particular product, again, like for that particular one, I'd probably wanna be thinking about what does like the most amount of revenue, because like this little mic stand we have right here, this thing's kind of like small and just like plastic, right? So something like this would probably not be selling much, but instead, if we were to do, um, you know, look at like what has the max amount of revenue, we'd probably like see like some bigger ones, like metal, heavy duty, whatever else that, uh, you know, that we could be thinking about like, okay, like how do I get into that particular niche that is selling uh, much better? So yeah, that's one way to do it. Looks like it's finally starting to catch up yeah. here. Catching <laughs> up on your screen too. Excellent. So I'm just gonna look why that loads, um, why that loads up, you know, like right away I'm looking at this and keep in mind guys that the way Amazon ranks these products. So when you pull up jungle scout, it pulls up in the order of how the products are ranked on that particular page. That doesn't necessarily mean what's selling the best though, right? That's, you know, Amazon takes in, uh, different accounts on how they rank these particular pro uh, products. Um, you know, like keyword relevancy is a big one. Uh, we know sales velocity is a big one, but some other, like the conversion rate of their particular products, probably a big one. So these are all things that Amazon uses to rank the product. So that's why, you know, I like pulling up the extension instead, sorting by estimated sales. You want to do that real quick. So to do that, you can just click on the header of one particular column. You can either click on, um, you know, estimated sales and sort by estimated sales, or you could do the same thing with estimated revenue. Um, and once you've done that, we can do what we're talking about here as far as, you know, what, why are these particular products doing better? Um, so, you know, cause like the top one is, let's see, the top one's only at like 650 sales, but this third one down is um, selling uh, like 1100. So what's, you know, like what's different about this particular one? So that, that would be the mummy style, correct? Yeah. So, Again, that's, you know, I, I assume that's the type of thing that you're looking at when you made that particular kind of grid. It is, yes. Uh, I guess one of the reasons that this one has is selling like more units is because the, the price is quite low. Um, but actually, when I looked into the spec of this one, it was like a, a lighter sleeping bag. Um, 
Whereas, um, as we'll find out later, I'm going to produce more of a, a high end, like a warmer sleeping bag for more seasons. Um, so that one's kind of like one of the outliers. And then some of these other ones. Um, so this one's quite a high end mummy style sleeping bag. Um, I guess the premium price kind of shows that. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's a higher price point and it's, you know, it's got less um, estimated sales than the third one down. Um, but the actual estimated revenue is higher. Oh, um, yeah. Good point. So, so what about that one that's like 20,000 pounds? What kind of is it? Number seven. Number seven. So that's more like, it's kind of a hybrid, right? Because it's, it's like envelope style at the bottom, but then it still has the, the hood and the drawstring at the top. Um, again, this one is, it says three season, but it also is 250, which is like the thickness of the, like the fiber inside the sleeping bag. Um, so like when you look into the reviews, which we'll also look at shortly, um, you know, it's a less sort of warm sleeping bag can be used across less seasons. Um, so these are like the kinds of things that I'm thinking about. I'm like looking at the estimated sales and revenue and then taking a look at actually what that product specification is like, you know, what style is it? Is it warm? Is it, you know, what can it be used for? Um, and then trying to figure out uh, which is the best option to go with. So did you know before you started this what like 250 and 400 and all that stuff was? Uh, no, it's it's just something that I've learned from like looking at the listings right. and then speaking because obviously we started the supplier outreach a few weeks ago as well. So speaking with suppliers already has given me, you know, a lot of the language that is used when talking about manufacturing this type of product. So I've kind of picked it up along the way. Which nice. Yeah. So that, and that's good. I think like the listeners can like uh, probably you know kind of understand that as well, right? Like a lot of these products that the data tells us are good products, you probably don't necessarily like know much about them. Just like Kim and I don't really know about. Well, I don't really know about any of the products. <laughs> I don't have any kids. <laughs> I don't know about baby towels. I don't really roast marshmallows. Um, I'm not. I, I haven't slept in a sleeping bag in quite a while. Um, but. <laughs> You know, I guess just like from this and reading these listings and talking to suppliers, you can learn just about everything you need to know, right? For sure, yeah. Cool. So let's, um, that being said, you want to switch back to your slides real quick? So we can take a look at the web app too in a second, but just from looking at the, um, the extension there, it's just loading a second, but, um, okay, so... This is kind of very top level, very basic how I have um, decided like how each of those styles is kind of performing. So with the mummy style, um, the sales and demand is, I would say medium, um, but the revenue and profitability is high because the, the ticket ticket price, like what the, what the consumer pays is generally higher. And the competition is medium. Um, there were sort of less sellers selling the higher end type of sleeping bag in this style. Um, the envelope style was higher sales, um, higher demand, um, but because the ticket price was lower, the uh, the profitability was kind of medium, and the competition was quite high. There was there was more sellers um, selling quite a lot of units per month with the envelope style, and then another one that we that I did look at previously was. Um, double sleeping bags and interestingly when I looked at this a few weeks ago the sales looked pretty good there was this one uh, FBA seller selling a double sleeping bag and it was doing pretty well um, but when I've looked uh, this week whilst doing my homework um, actually the sales have, have dropped off so that would indicate to me that the sales are not sort of consistent from month to month and so I kind of decided against the double sleeping bag for that reason um, and I think, Greg, you would agree with that, right? Yeah, I think I agree with everything you said there. It seems like the mummy sleeping bag is the best one to go for. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a smart move for you. Yeah, sure. Okay, so should we take a look at the, the web app at some of the, the tracked products as well? Yeah, for sure. So let me, um, since your internet is going too slow, we don't have time for that, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> let me um, pull up my internet. My uh, I just pulled up in my window real quick so we can look at it here. Awesome. Um, I haven't added all the ones that you have, but I know I did a few, I think just as like an example. Mm -hmm. um, so what's cool about this is we can kind of like look at these products underneath a magnifying glass, right? So um, let's go ahead and just actually, I'm just gonna go to amazon.co.uk. 
Um, I'm gonna search for. Uh, <laughs> we're not selling baby <laughs> towels anymore. Sleeping bag. And let's let's see. So which one of these do you like? Uh, this Viking Trek one is probably the most similar. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna add this just to my tracker real quickly, just so we can look at it on mine. Do, 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 do. Sweet. All right. So with this particular product, um, what we're able to see here is actually this. I can actually tell this is a private label seller. Um, but we're able to see the inventory and the estimated sales on a daily basis, um, which is nice. The green line is also uh, the rank, which is good because this can give us a little bit of insight of how well this particular product is in the, the parent category, which is sports and outdoors. Um, so let's see, it looks like we have three of the sleeping bags in here. We'll get the, the hooded baby towels out of the way. So this, I think what we were actually looking at this one before, and this actually seller ran out of stock. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is like, I think why this is an important, why I encourage you guys to like track these particular products is like when we started our product research, that was like a month ago now, right? So I remember like at that time there was one double sleeping bag who was doing like really good, right? Wasn't he like in the top three or whatever? Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's good like when you're starting to do this product research to add a bunch of these into your product tracker. And that way you can track them over time because, you know, like right now when we search for just sleeping bags, that double one doesn't show up. But you know, we're looking at my product tracker, not yours. You probably have that double one in your product tracker and it's probably similar to this, like this particular one's out of stock, right? So some people say like, well, you know, the product tracker, uh, you know, it updates on a daily basis. So some people say like, well, you know, like if I'm trying to, like, what's the point of that if I'm choosing a product in like one day? It's like, well, we chose our niche, you know, like a few weeks ago now, but since it takes time to be talking to these factories, contacting them, it's easy for us to kind of like monitor how the niche is doing as a whole uh, throughout this time by like tracking these products. That's kind of like one of the reasons I really like it. Um, what are you? What did you have next? Okay, sweet. So some of the reviews. So let's. Um, I'm gonna pop it over to your screen. You can show that. Awesome. So what did you find out when you were looking at these different reviews? Awesome, yeah. So once I'd finished with uh, looking at that data, I started looking at reviews, again, across the different types of products because I really wanted to find out what people liked about my future competitor products and also what they really didn't like. And I found loads of useful stuff just from looking at Amazon. So um, quite a lot of people were commenting on, you know, some a lot of the positive reviews were to do with what it kept me warm. So straight away, I know that the sleeping bag needs to keep people warm. Um, on conversely, there was also a lot of negative uh, reviews on some of these items saying um, that the zip didn't work properly and that it wasn't warm. So straight away I know that I need to speak to the manufacturers about getting a very high quality product produced um, and that the zips need to be durable, long lasting, anti-snag, um, because these are things that really like people get upset about when they're when they're not right uh, some more reviews here so um, again not warm enough people were mentioning like my two season sleeping bag outperforms this one um, so you know if we're gonna market a sleeping uh, a mummy style sleeping bag for example as a three season sleeping bag then it needs to be suitable for that and you know if we're gonna say you can use it between these temperatures then it needs to be suitable for that um, other people were saying lightweight but warm. So people obviously, they, do, they want it to be warm, but they also want it to be light. Um, size was another one. So particularly, you know, this was great for my husband who was uh, six foot four. So there was quite a lot of reviews about that. And I kind of came to the conclusion that, you know, everybody's a different size. And particularly with like a mummy style sleeping bag, um, it's more fitted to the body. So, you know, if you're quite uh, a short person like I am, you probably want a smaller one. Greg's quite tall. He would want a, <laughs> want a, a larger. One. Yeah, exactly. Um, and these things matter to people from, you know, I found that out from looking at the reviews. Um, here's a, another cool idea. So 
we were talking about double sleeping bags and I kind of ditched that idea, but then I found that people were saying, oh, we can zip these oh, together. Yeah, this is good. So I'm like, yeah, well, we could, we could have single sleeping bags. People could buy two. We could even do a deal where they like buy two, get 10% off and then point. they can zip them together. Yeah. So that was, you know, a really cool idea that came, just came out from looking at reviews. Um, finally, again, look cheap after one use, material split. So again, it's quality and we're really gonna be like, have a close eye on that when we get the samples. Um, they arrived soaking wet and stinking. So then I was thinking, oh, okay, so how am I gonna like package these? How are they gonna turn up to the Amazon warehouse? How are they gonna land in the customer's hands? We need to think about what packaging we put on them too, to make sure things like that don't happen. Um, so yeah, overall I got a lot of ideas just from looking at reviews and I, I did spend, you know, like a good hour or two, like looking at all of like the, my future competitors, all of their good reviews, all of their bad reviews. Generally the ones in the middle don't tell you too much. Like people who give a three star review are just like, yeah, it was good. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> but if you go for those five stars, those one stars, you really start to get a sense of uh, different uh, features and things that you could add to the product. That's a good point. So I'm sure everyone knows this too, but you know, like the easiest way to do that, right, is just to go onto one of the Amazon pages, you just click on the reviews. You can uh, then click on like one star or five star. You can even sort, I think, by most helpful. A lot of those like yeah. have a lot of text, which is really nice. Um, so it's super easy to do. And this is always like cool to me because like 10 years ago, like not that long ago, these big companies would spend like tens of, maybe, or maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars doing like, uh, like market research, you know, like surveying these people, using them and stuff to like figure out like how to improve on them and stuff. And now just like the everyday average joke and just go on Amazon, read a whole bunch of reviews and just get like so much insight from it. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. And sometimes you get some really funny reviews as well. So that's always amusing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so next up, I moved on to some external research. So this is step three. Um, so I did a little research and found I am from the UK, so I happen to know a few like camping stores, but it, you know, it's pretty easy. Just do a quick Google, find some, uh, retailers, if you can like a specific retailer for your niche, um, in the marketplace that you're looking to sell in and take a look at their products on their website. And so I was looking at a company called Mountain Warehouse and another one called Blacks and actually a really useful thing to do here is when I was on the Mountain Warehouse store, I could filter their sleeping bag. I searched for sleeping bags and then I filtered it by recommended. And actually uh, the screenshot uh, on screen right now, the recommended items that came up first were these mummy style sleeping bags. So that was another reassuring sign for me that maybe that's the right direction to go in. Um, and so another thing I did was to read the product information on these other websites outside of Amazon. Again, you, you can look at reviews here too if you want. Not everybody has like a lot of reviews like Am Amazon does. Um, but just from looking at this, you know, I got a few other ideas like they're being really um, specific about what temperatures their sleeping bags can be used in. And it looks like they're even trying to sort of prevent any negative reviews by saying uh, at the bottom there, personal preference, please remember that everyone feels the hot and cold differently. <laughs> so, you know, the, I'm getting ideas here such as, um, you know, how I might even write my content for my product listing down the line for this type of product. And I've also got some reassurance that this mummy style is, is a good one to go with too. Um, so yeah, it was well worthwhile spending, you know, half an hour to an hour, just taking a look at some other retailers outside of Amazon. I also like this, it says like comfort temperature, you know, like negative one to four C, uh, you know, extreme temperature. So I think that's good. Like you'd say like, like we recommend use it in these temperatures. Uh, yeah, maybe it'll, like, I'd be a little bit scared saying like it's good for survival <laughs> down to really cold, but <laughs> yeah. I don't want, I don't really want anyone climbing Everest with our bag, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, for that's, sure. that's good insight. <laughs> Yeah, and it it's, uh, starts to give me some ideas uh, for later on down the line too. Okay, so moving on to step four. As Greg mentioned earlier, um, last week we had Manuel on as our guest speaker and he started to talk about testing and uh, certificates. So he actually mentioned quite a few different certificates that I would need for my sleeping bag, which is an adult sleeping bag. Um, and they are listed on screen there. There's a few links there. Now we can't really go into like much detail on 
what you might need for your particular product idea or even the marketplace that you're looking to sell in because it can vary depending on the type of product and what materials are used, which country you're planning to sell in. So it is quite a large topic and I understand that a lot of you are asking questions about what certificates do I need. Um, but I, you know, Greg gave me some advice on this. If, if you Yeah, share. like one of my, well, I mean like a Google search is always like a great place to start, right? Another good place is to see like if your um, competitors have any uh, certificates that they're particularly advertising. One of the, another good spot is to ask a testing or inspection company. So like VTrust or Asia Inspection or whatever else, you can just like email the people there saying, hey, I'm importing this sleeping bag um, into the UK or whatever country or into the EU, like what types of tests do you normally run for this particular, you know, this particular type of product for this country? And they're usually seem to be pretty knowledgeable and pretty good. At the end of the day, it is up to you to make sure that you are following all the guidelines. But I've figured, you know, I've found that just through like Google and talking to, or the the uh, the factory as well, you know, you can always ask them like what type of inspections do other people use for this particular product. Through like those three sources, I've never had any problems with it. it seems like you can always figure it out. And from, uh, you know, I'm not as experienced with selling in the EU from what Manuel's telling us and what we've read, they are a little bit strict, more, a little bit stricter about these uh, uh, particular tests and stuff than what the U.S. is. So it's worth spending a little time making sure you're following all the rules. Yep, and I've found that generally, you know, my top suppliers that I've been speaking with, they've been really helpful if I send them any of these sorts of questions. And as Manuel explained last week, um, some of them may have the certificates, and if they do, like you could ask to see them. And some of them have something called a declaration of conformity where it's uh, where they declare that they conform to these uh, particular tests or certificates. Um, and I also found uh, from Greg's advice, I had a look on asiainspection.com and they actually have, um, if you just go to their main navigation, you can actually take a look at different product categories there. And there's some, uh, there's lists on their website straight away. That's so. Nice. It gives you, you know, if you do a bit of research first, this is what I did and um, we all got some advice last week from Manuel, but if you just have a little bit of background knowledge about it before you ask the suppliers, um, but generally speaking, a good supplier I've found has uh, information to give you right off the bat. So um, try not to worry about it too much, but it is really important at the same time to make sure that you get all this in place before you get it to your inspection company later on. So step five, um, so once you've gone through all of that, you need to sort of balance everything out and finalize your product specification. And then at that point, you're gonna be communicating backwards and forwards with your suppliers to make sure that they can do it, that the price is still gonna be feasible. Um, we did our profit calculations a few weeks ago um, and then eventually order some samples. Um, so I had some further considerations, for example, how many variations am I going to do? We've already mentioned different sizes of sleeping bags, um, managing several um, SKUs. I think this is fine. Like we do this with Jungle Snugs, right, Greg? And yeah. it's, you know, it adds slightly more uh, admin, I, I guess, for having more than one. A little bit of like a little more of like an inventory headache, right? But like, yeah. I think it's worth it. Yeah, totally. Um, can my top suppliers uh, provide my variations? So again, before you order samples, you need to make sure that all of these specifications that you've now come up with, they are actually able to, to meet those specifications. Um, and we don't wanna waste any money on samples with suppliers that can't do that. So that's why it's so important to make sure that you do all of this research beforehand. Um, and then, yeah, have they, have they sent the certificates? Have you seen them? Um, and then moving on to the final spec. So this is what I've come up with. Sweet. <laughs> so I've decided to go for a mummy style. Um, you could probably tell I was going that direction throughout this <laughs> webinar. <laughs> um, I wanna do mm. something that's quite high end. Um, you can like spend like hundreds of pounds in the UK on like a super high end sleeping bag that you would take to Mount Everest. That's not my target market. I'm right. sort of going for people who, you know. Those guys probably aren't shopping on Amazon, right? No, They're going exactly. to like the specialty store or whatever. Yeah, like big brands. Um, so, but I still want it to be a high, of a high quality. So three to four seasons, warm. 
lightweight, water resistant, uh, 300 G GSM, which as I said, is something that I learned about during this process. And then my differentiating features. So I want an anti-snag zipper. Um, another thing that I, um, I'm also thinking of adding is a, a sort of a flap that goes over the zip um, to stop it from, I don't know, moving around. That was another yeah. thing I found in the reviews. An internal pocket for valuables. So that's something that came up. Um, I've seen it on quite a few other competitor products. It's a nice little addition to have. Uh, drawstring hood uh, can be zipped together. That was probably the coolest thing I found by doing this particular bit of research. And two colorways, I think, just so that people have something to choose between and then two sizes. Um, and I think the way I'll go about this is uh, the one size would be like up to a certain height and then the, the second size will be from that height up to, you know, sort of over over six Sounds feet. Like yeah, yeah, someone tall. Um, so, yeah, that's what I put together. What do you what do you think, Greg? I think that's really good. I f we forgot to mention a little bit earlier. Um, let me actually just share my screen real quick to make sure you guys can see this. Um, I forgot to mention earlier, though, that actually like other Amazon stores are also a good resource for finding um, uh, good like product ideas, right? So we'll do sleeping bag um so you know i can also just like we were just like we showed you in the uh the uk store we can do the same thing in the like the us store or the germany store um and get other good ideas right so like we said earlier you know you can search for this you can click on estimated sales or estimated revenue to sort by those so we'll go ahead and do that see who is doing the most revenue and we can get ideas from here too, right? Uh, you know, the what a particular country or culture likes or prefers may be a little bit different, of course. <laughs> but I mean, like, use your like best judgment there, right? So, you know, why is this particular one selling one hundred seventeen thousand dollars a month? Um, if we look at it, oh, there's the little like flap thing you were talking about in the second picture. Yeah. So, you know, like it has this little flap. Is that why it's the best? I don't know. I'd probably have to read the reviews, but we can get good ideas from this, right? Like, um, these little compression sacks, that's like a good idea. Uh, <laughs> looks like it's a good Christmas <laughs> gift. Um, so, you know, you can, you don't have to just look at like amazon.co.uk to get these ideas too, right? So you can do the same thing in, uh, German. I don't speak any German, but I bet I could probably figure this out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just do sleeping bag, even though I know that's not the German word. But I think, um, I think I can figure out what it is. It's probably this one. And of course you can always use Google Translate if you don't know. So I'm gonna try this one. we will probably pull a few more results since it's actually in the country's language, not English. Um, and again, same thing. I'm, I can run the Jungle Scout extension here and we can be looking at which ones are doing the best. Something that I know some people have been asking about and are curious about is if we're going to do the pan-European. Um, we haven't really touched on it yet because we want everyone to stay focused on what's more most important right now. And that's choosing your niche, choosing your product, finding a supplier and getting samples ordered. But yes, down the road, we are going to explore sent, selling in multiple marketplaces um, in the EU. So, you know, same thing, like, uh, this one's doing really well, but I think this actually isn't a real sleeping bag. I think it's like a liner, but you know, something like this one is, so we could be looking at this, you know, like we could either read the reviews with the help of Google translate, or, um, I could just be looking at it to get additional ideas. So yeah, that's one thing. I think we forgot to mention that, right? Yeah. All right. Um, sweet. Okay. So the thing I found during this part of the process is um, the key is in the communication. So um, it was in like week two or week three, I think I sent out my initial supplier outreach and I had a really nicely laid out template and asked a whole bunch of questions to lots of different suppliers. And now that I'm speaking to the ones that I'm interested in, um, the key is to keep communicating with them. And as I've been building out this specification, I've had to ask them lots of additional questions. So I started out with another well laid out email, just just like uh, the one before with, with numbered questions. 
that they can reply to. Um, but then I've actually found that a lot of uh, the questions, you know, it'd be on the fly, like, oh, can you just answer this as well? So it's really useful at this point to get them on WeChat or Skype or whatever communication tools they are using to get these like quick fire answers and get through the process a little bit quicker. Yeah, and really those two, like, I've never found any factory that doesn't use Skype or WeChat. Um, or, and all of them are like, pretty much all of them use both too. So um, I'll just emphasize this, that, you know, if you're just exchanging emails, especially like if you live in North America and you're answering emails when they're asleep and vice versa, this can get really, this part can really get dragged out if you're trying to go back and forth over a bunch of things. So I would really encourage you guys to stay up late one night or wake up early or wherever you're at in the world to kind of like get on their time zone, get on WeChat or Skype with them. And you can really like get all these questions answered in like, you know, one, one hour session instead of going back on emails like over the course of two weeks. So I really encourage that. Yep. And generally this is a really good point to continue to like figure out which suppliers are going to be best as well because you can really start to tell which ones want to work with you and are eager to meet your your requirements for your product so yeah good point that's always a good way to gauge them right like how responsive are they on wechat and stuff then one nice thing about wechat is like it seems like almost all the sales reps especially the younger ones all have it on their phone so they answer it kind of like off hours where skype um sometimes that's true with skype but it seems to be not as much of the case so yeah, if you have WeChat, I'd probably even recommend that. For sure. So, I started to uh, make a note of all the different like specifications. Uh, I've mentioned some of them already. Um, I've put them into a spreadsheet. There's a, your homework is coming up, so don't worry. You'll, <laughs> get, you'll get a template too. Don't worry, Kim, we'll give you homework. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, this is kind of what I've come up with so far and uh, still working on it and gonna order the samples very, very soon. Um, and I guess just making a note of it makes it easier so that you don't forget anything and ensure that all of the supplies that you're gonna order samples from are on board. Um, a few other things that um, I really wanted to seek Greg's advice on was things like packaging and labeling because I don't want to um, think about that later on down the line and then a supplier be like, oh, well that, now that's gonna cost you extra. Or, you know, or then say, oh, well, I can't do that. So at this point, I'm starting to think about um, what sort of labels are gonna be on the product. And as I mentioned earlier, that, you know, the outer packaging, maybe it needs to be some sort of bag or waterproof bag so that they don't get wet in transit and things like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't, Greg, do you have Yeah, any what I would tips? recommend here is this is like, again, one of those points where it's really good to be working like with the factory. So what I always do is I always just say, like, what type of packaging do you normally use for this particular product? Um, uh, like, what's your standard size like tag to sew into the particular sleeping bag? Because that's always like a great starting point. Maybe if you want a little bit of different packaging, then at that point, that's when you can ask them. But you might as well start and figure out like what they're familiar with yep. because that's the easiest for them. That's gonna cause like the least amount of headaches for them, which means like hopefully it'll get done faster. Um, especially for someone like us, like we don't really know anything about sleeping bags. So it's like, well, if you normally put this in a box and the box looks nice, then like I'm cool with that. If you normally just, you know, it just comes like in the bag and then there's like another like poly bag on top of it, like I'm probably just cool with that too, you know? So it's like, what we'll just figure find out what they're, they normally use and then, um, you know, only ask them to change, we'll probably only ask them to change it if we're like, eh, this is kind of janky or whatever. Yeah. Huh. I've also started to think about uh, product names um, and we are going to look at uh, sort of branding and that whole process later on down the line. But, you know, it's just, I'm starting to get creative with it. Um, but at this point, um, Greg, am I, I like, am I okay to order the samples without, say, a logo printed on it? Is that? Yeah, for sure. So it's normally going to cost, like, actually a lot of factories, like, pretty much will just straight up tell you no, that they can't put, like, the logo and, like, the printing on just one unit of a sample order. Um, if they are willing to do so, it's normally fairly expensive and adds a significant amount of lead time to get the sample. So keep in mind, like, we're trying to gauge the quality of, like, or the quality of the main product is kind of our like number one concern. Um, you know, like on this particular uh, sleeping bag, we're probably just gonna put like our brand on like the tag. 
or maybe it's going to be like screen printed on a little area or something but that's that's like pretty easy for a factory to do they're probably not going to screw up like screen printing a small logo like in the corner of our bag so it's not that big of a deal for our particular sample um to have that like ready for it so maybe they can give us a sample that has another brand screen printed on it um, we will ask like if they have some kind of standardized packaging to kind of give us a uh, uh, to see if they can send us like a sample of the packaging as well then we can kind of grade it from there so yeah we we're not gonna let that hold up our sample process because that like I said that could get really time-consuming or costly or they may just say no awesome yeah so with all of these like things in mind I'm just gonna continue to speak to my suppliers and and then eventually um, we're gonna order those samples. Uh, yay! Um, all right. I just thought of something. Okay. Since you're trying to choose a brand name, I feel like we should get the audience's help. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys. <laughs> so we want. We had our first product was Jungle Sticks. It was like a JS, just like you know the company <laughs> like JS here. The second product was Jungle Snugs. So again, a JS. So we really want. We want this to be a jungle S something, right? Yeah, for sure. All right, so we really want this to be a jungle S something. So drop in the chat box your brand name. And yeah, you might find this on Kim's sleeping bags uh, in the near future. Um, so yeah, jungle something. Drop it in the chat box. In a few minutes, I'll read off uh, some of the names that you guys put in there. And yeah, we'll see if there's anything good. Awesome. <laughs> Is this where you give us our homework? Yep. Here comes the homework. I put a very <laughs> friendly dancing banana on there to make it more fun. <laughs> so using the blueprint from this session, so we've kind of gone through five steps to specking out your product idea, whatever that product might be. Um, you know, even if you have no experience in it, don't worry. You can get there with a little bit of research, speaking to suppliers, speaking to inspection companies, um, and going through that same process that we've we've just spoke about. Um, and then you can create your product specification and make it really detailed. Um, you know, try and think of everything that you need for this product upfront rather than later on. Um, that's not to say you can't change it later on, but it's always better to, you know, do this research upfront. Yeah. Um, and make sure that, you know, you really want your product to stand out. Um, so also um, go through all any product certifications and get all of that um, nailed down too and um, yeah so when you've done this and you've continued to speak to your top suppliers about this and you've narrowed it down to your top th I would say through we're gonna order from three suppliers right Greg yeah probably two or three two or three yeah that's good and then do the same so you can order your samples too um, there is a new template uh, the link is on the screen and in the chat box I believe so you can in in this spreadsheet it kind of just reiterates what we've just been through there's there's a checklist um in fact i'll just show you it just now here Sweet. we go looks good so um yep yeah, there's uh there we go. So step one to five, this is literally what we've been through today. So just as a reminder um, for you guys, if you forget any of it, a um, few resources in there. And then here is the same template that I use just to keep a list of everything. Do bear in mind that every single product niche is different. So if you need to, you know, add to this or change it or, you know, change any of the columns, then go for it. You know, do whatever works for you. Um, and just as a reminder, if you do want to download this, you need to go to file and make a copy and that will save it to a Google Drive account. Or you can do file and download as and hit the Microsoft Excel to get a spreadsheet on your desktop. Um, so this is a shared file, so you can't just edit this one. You just need to download it first. I always laugh when you can see everyone joining it yeah. uh, live. <laughs> I can see you all at the top. <laughs> all right, it means there's people doing their homework, which is good. All right, so... Those are all your slides, right? Yeah. All right, sweet. So I'm gonna pull up the uh, chat box then, so we can look at some of these, um, some of our submissions, and then also, so we can. Do, 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 do. Um, we have a few minutes too, so let's go ahead and answer like five minutes worth of questions as well. So I'm pulling up the chat box now. Oh man, we have lots of different ones. All right. 
tons and tons of wow jungle snoozy <laughs> jungle jungle sleepies jungle snoozers jungle sack jungle sexy sleepers ooh <laughs> uh, let's see what you have any favorites in here getting really cra- uh, creative i like the snoozy one that's like jungle snoozers it's a, a word for sleeping isn't it like jungle sack what did lenny say earlier uh it was a uh, jungle swag jungle swag which is an australian word for a sleeping bag i believe what what do you guys think about jungle swag put it that in the chat box when i think of swag i think of like free t-shirts and stuff but that's kind of cool jungle sleeper jungle slumber um jungle siesta jungle survivor we have lots of options jungle here. snores <laughs> i'm a jungle survivor jungle snooze um Cool. The winning name gets a free bag. This is what Joseph S. is asking. Sure. If we choose your name and you legit were the first one to say it, then contact us after we make it. I'll hook you up with a free bag. Hey, there's, uh, a, there's a good question from Terrence, which I could answer. If... Go ahead. Okay, so Terrence Joe said, uh, you listed CE Reach as required. However, it doesn't look like that is a must-have in the EU for sleeping bags. So... Um, these were actually some of the requirements that we covered last week with manual and so there's two things here Um, first of all I would want to uh, like I've said speak to suppliers and inspection companies to find out what is the minimum requirement and make sure that you know that is covered at the very least but then last week manual actually uh, shared a really useful tip in that you can differentiate from your competitors by having certificates that that nobody else has so there's there's certificates out there for like sustainably sourced products and you can put this in your product listing so you know these things are worth looking into as well because you might eventually put these things in your listing um, or in you know in any inserts on the product so it's always worth looking into the bare minimum and then also above and beyond as well all right i got another good question i'm going to answer why aren't we focusing also on the USA market in the same time to get some sales there? Is this strictly for the USA market? So um, this is a good question. And it's it's not uh, it's additional work to focus on more than one uh, marketplace, okay? So if we want to ship this into the uh, US as well, keep in mind it's like a separate shipment, which um, each time you know you place the shipments, of course, additional money. Um, there's different potential like regulations there. We have to put a different FN SKU on our packaging. So there is some work required. It's not quite as easy as like, oh, I'll just, I'll just, you know, ship some more units to the U S the same time I'm sending it into the UK. That's why I'm actually a believer of doing like product research and choosing products separately for different markets. So if there's good demand and limited competition of sleeping bags in the U S we might decide to do that. However, like I personally don't believe that it's worth just like throwing it up there to see if it sticks. And cause it's like, that doesn't really work. You know, like through all the products I've launched, I've kind of like figured out this blueprint, what does work on Amazon. And like, it has to have like good demand with low competition. Otherwise it's just extremely hard to do. So, I mean, that's the same reason that like we haven't sent marshmallow sticks into the UK cause they sell like 20 a month and that's just not it's worth too our, cold. <laughs> it's too, too cold, cold to rush marshmallows <laughs> there. Um, so that's why we're not, uh, that's why we're not sending marshmallow sticks there. Um, all right. Lots of nice things. You're very welcome, guys. You're welcome, welcome. Um, Greg, can you move the show 30 minutes earlier? I think we're actually doing an hour later next week. Maybe that helps. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, I actually know good. I have a thing that I bet people are wondering, but they did, I don't see it right here. Um, is oftentimes they get asked how much should samples cost? So generally for a sample, like for this product, I'm going to expect to pay probably like $60, maybe 70, uh, 80 starting to get a little high. So let's say like 50 to $70. So generally a factory would give you something like a sleeping bag, like for free, but they're paying for like the express courier shipping, which it, it legitimately is like 50 bucks or whatever. So they're not necessarily like making any money off you on this. Um, that's just how much it costs, you know, to get the sample to you. So, you know, if we order three samples, let's say the average 60 bucks, it is going to cost us like $180 in samples, but this is pretty important to figure out which factory is going to be the best one to, um, to make our particular product. So let's see, maybe we'll do two more quick questions. 
Um, how are you handling returns? Um, you know, this seems wasteful and I wish I had a better way, but I dispose of all returns that aren't um, in new condition. So it's, you know, I don't want to ship all these like products to my house <laughs> to repackage them. I'm not really into things like that. Um, there are services that do it. However, it seems like it you end up not really making any money off it. So we are just going to be disposing of these. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm seeing if there's any. Uh, I know there's a number of questions in here. Since we only have time for one left, I'm seeing if there's any recurring ones right here. Um, Oh, quick question. My second product supplier is asking me the full payment. That's, um, in my opinion, they're being a little bit bullish. Uh, generally, you shouldn't have to pay. And I actually, I, would, I wouldn't do this. Um, I would never pay the full amount up front. So what's most common for a first order? I would probably say, I'd probably say 50% deposit and 50% um, once the goods are done is probably most common for something like this. Uh, the other next most common is 30, 70. So if this pro if this order costs us two thousand dollars, I would have to pay a thirty percent deposit, which is like six hundred bucks, and then I have to pay fourteen hundred dollars once the goods were done. After you build a relationship with a supplier, you can negotiate better terms. You should you should pretty easily be able to negotiate at least thirty seventy if you didn't get that with your first shipment. But um, after you've developed a relationship, it's fairly common to do like thirty percent deposit to start the order. And then 70% like when the goods arrive at the destination as opposed to like when they're shipped. But it seems like rarely do suppliers want to do something like that until you've built a relationship. You've, you know, you've purchased like a few orders from them. Um, so that is the one hour mark. These things go fast. Very fast. <laughs> I wish we had time to answer more questions, but we do like to keep these at an hour, guys. So... We don't know for sure what time next week's session is going to be, so make sure you subscribe at junglescott.com forward slash million so you get the notification of what time next week's um, uh, session is going to be on. What are we talking about next week? So next week, I'm really excited about this one, actually, because a lot of you guys have been asking about this for the past few weeks, so we're going to cover how to set up your business to sell. Everyone's gonna be UK. happy about this. Yeah. Everyone's been freaking out about VAT and everything. Yeah. Don't worry, we, we didn't have to worry about that yet. So go. So it's tax and legal stuff. Uh, very important, particularly um, when you, you know, you're selling into a whole new marketplace. Um, we have uh, an expert who is an accountant joining us to tell us how it all works. Um, it is a complex topic, so we'll probably cover it again at some point during the case study, you know, maybe to go into more detail, but this is going to give you everything you need to know to get started. Fabulous. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please give us the big thumbs up or heart below, wherever it is, maybe over here, I don't know, um, depending on where you're tuning in from. I'm glad we got to get to a few questions. We'll try to get to some more questions next week because I know everyone has um, a lot of questions about that particular subject. And like I said, we're, like Kim said, we're bringing on an expert, so she should be able to answer all these questions we have. That's a sweet shirt. What does it say? Uh, hashtag jungle scouting. <laughs> In mine, I've got I've got 99 problems, but finding a product ain't one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Subscribe. Like us. Thumbs up. All that good stuff. Adios. Bye. See you later.